Hello, thank you for taking the time to watch this webinar about the new Public Interest Disclosures Act, or PID Act for short, which comes into force on 1 October. I recognise those watching this recording are spread across New South Wales, and I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of the land we meet on today. I would also like to pay my respects to all Elders past and present, and to the children of today who are the Elders of the future. My name is Louise Lazzarino and I am a Deputy New South Wales Ombudsman. The PID Act affects all New South Wales government agencies, local councils, local Aboriginal land councils, integrity agencies and public universities. All heads of agencies and senior executives have responsibilities to ensure their agencies comply with the Act. Even more than this, all those in senior positions are responsible for creating and influencing a culture that encourages people to speak up and support those people when they do. The PID Act is an important part of this, and I hope that you find today's short session useful. We will be talking about some of the key features of the Act, what these mean for agencies, and how the Ombudsman will be working to assist with implementing the new Act. I'm very pleased to have Kate Boyd with me today to discuss the new Act. Kate is a Deputy Secretary and the General Counsel for the New South Wales Cabinet Office. She has over 10 years experience as a New South Wales Government Lawyer. Kate received the Public Service Medal in the 2022 Australia Day Honours, in recognition of her work on the legal response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Before joining the New South Wales Government, Kate specialised in competition and consumer law. The Cabinet Office is the policy owner of the new PID Act, which is why it's good to have Kate here today to share her perspective on the Act and how it will operate. Good government relies on public officials speaking up when they witness or become aware of wrongdoing in the public sector. This means that everyone needs to know who to go to when they need to report wrongdoing. A strong speak up culture that encourages public officials to report serious wrongdoing is essential to maintaining the integrity of the public sector. An integral part of that speak up culture is having in place a framework that facilitates public interest reporting of serious wrongdoing by protecting those who speak up from detriment, taking active steps to maintain the confidentiality of reports and imposing duties on agencies who receive reports of wrongdoing to take appropriate action to investigate or otherwise deal with them. In New South Wales, that framework is the PID Act. There are a number of core considerations for each agency to prepare for the new PID Act. This includes the New South Wales Ombudsman's Office. As heads of agency, you need to make sure that your agencies have procedures and a PID policy in place which facilitate the disclosure of serious wrongdoing by public officials. Promote a culture in which public interest disclosures are encouraged, making sure all staff are aware of how they can make a disclosure. This is what we mean when we talk about a speak-up culture. Ensure staff with PID responsibilities are provided with training about receiving and handling disclosures at regular intervals. Protect public officials, witnesses and others from detriment or liability that might arise as a result of public interest disclosures and keep records and report to the New South Wales Ombudsman's Office about how you've dealt with voluntary public interest disclosures. As leaders, the most important responsibility we have is to make sure our staff know that speaking up is the right thing to do. They need to know they will be protected from detrimental action and that agencies will take their disclosure seriously and take appropriate action. This means we all need to ensure we have created an environment in which our staff are confident in coming forward and we have the best possible systems in place to appropriately deal with PIDs. That staff are provided with the training and information that they need. That we are responding in a timely and appropriate manner to any disclosures we receive. And that we are protecting those who come forward, as well as those who are the subject of a disclosure, from the risk of detrimental action. While the New South Wales Ombudsman's Office has a range of responsibilities under the new PID Act, as I mentioned, the Cabinet Office are the policy owners for the Act. So I'd now like to hand over to Kate to provide an overview of some of the key aspects. Thanks so much, Louise, for that introduction. Um, as Louise mentioned, the Act contains lots of new requirements on how to deal with PIDs, how to protect PID makers and raise public sector awareness, and to ensure that people that have duties under the Act are properly trained and to ensure that reporting on PIDs uh, in New South Wales is done properly. 
Um, the Act is designed to make it easy and simple for all of us working on behalf of government to report serious wrongdoing and to provide us with protections if and when we do. The Act is premised on the idea of there being no wrong doors, meaning that PID makers have additional pathways to report serious wrongdoing and they won't miss out on the protections of the Act because of technical loopholes. One way in which the Act achieves this is that managers are now able to receive disclosures. Uh, they're not expected to assess the disclosure, but they do have a duty to communicate the disclosure to a disclosure officer. The new Act has three categories of PIDs. First, we have voluntary, then mandatory, and witness. A voluntary disclosure is a report that's been made by a public official because they decided of their own accord to come forward and disclose what they know. A mandatory disclosure is different. It's where the public official has made the report about serious wrongdoing because they have a legal duty or obligation to make that report. Uh, or because making that report is an ordinary part of their role or function in an agency. And thirdly, a witness disclosure is the third kind of PID and that's where a person discloses information in the course of an investigation of serious wrongdoing um, after a request or a requirement of the person investigating that matter. As with various other legislative schemes that are targeted at public sector integrity and accountability. Um, each government agency has some core or key responsibilities. Many of those responsibilities sit with each of us. The Ombudsman is responsible for providing assistance and guidance as well as monitoring the effectiveness of the Act. And Louise can discuss what the Ombudsman's office is working on at the moment. As Kate mentioned, the New South Wales Ombudsman is responsible for oversight of the PID Act um, in New South Wales. So we provide information, advice and assistance to agencies and public officials on a range of matters relating to the PID Act. We also have an ability to audit and monitor um, an agency's handling of public interest disclosures. Our office is also an integrity agency under the PID Act. We are a number of integrity agencies with responsibilities under the Act, and those agencies include the Independent Commission Against Corruption, the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission and the Audit Office, and the Information and Privacy Commissioners. Presently, our focus has been on providing advice and guidance on implementing the new Act and preparing training and awareness materials for agencies. This includes a model PID policy and PID guidelines, which are now available on our website. We will be releasing a series of awareness videos for staff across the sector, and those will be available for agencies to upload to their intranet, show in staff meetings or distribute in a way that best suits um, their staff and their agency context. We will also be providing a suite of training materials for public officials at various levels. This will include interactive e-learning materials as well as face-to-face -face courses. Agencies will be able to upload the e-learning modules onto their own LMS or use the facilitator materials to deliver the courses face-to-face. The PID unit is reaching out to agencies to book a series of virtual roundtable events during August and September with representatives from agencies. We're also presenting at a number of meetings and forums about the new PID Act. We look forward to working with you all over the next few years to implement and embed the PID Act. Kate, you mentioned that um, managers will be recipients of PIDs under the new Act. So who are managers and how can we make sure they know what to do with a PID once they've received one? Under the new Act, every manager in the public sector will become a potential recipient of a PID. Um, this is a significant feature of the new Act and we recognise that it will require a great deal of training and awareness work from us and also from um, agencies to ensure that managers are, you know, feel equipped to fulfil that role. Um, managers were included as a, an avenue of reporting to normalise whistleblowing within agencies and to make sure that people who see wrongdoing are protected when they report it. Research shows that managers are often the first and natural point of contact for many public officials who are seeking to report wrongdoing and it also helps to make sure that there are no wrong doors when people decide to come forward and report serious wrongdoing. For most public officials, their manager's pretty easy to identify, um, but the Act defines manager for most public officials to be the person to whom they report either directly or indirectly, uh, or who supervises them directly or indirectly. 
person can obviously have more than one manager under this definition and any of those managers will be a PID recipient for that person. Uh, for ministerial staff or those working in other political offices under the Members of Parliament Staff Act, for example, the new Act provides that their manager will be their Chief of Staff of their office, not the Minister. The Act applies a different meaning of manager where services or functions are being provided by a contractor or a volunteer. Uh, for individual contractors, subcontractors or volunteers providing services or who are exercising functions on behalf of an agency, their manager is taken to be the public official in the agency who monitors or sort of oversees the services and functions that they are delivering or who manages the relevant contract or volunteer arrangement. For staff of entities that contract to provide services or exercise functions on behalf of an agency, uh, their manager is taken to be the public official in that agency who oversees those services or functions or who manages the relevant contract. If a manager does receive a PID, their immediate job is to communicate that to a disclosure officer of the relevant agency. Um, managers will be able to find out who their agency's disclosure officers are from the agency's PID policy. Um, that will be required to be, to be documented so people know where those things have to be referred. Managers obviously also have a duty to help support their staff member who has made a report under the Act, including by keeping the report and the identity of that staff member confidential, except when reporting it up, of course, to the disclosure officer. The Act requires managers to do this as soon as reasonably practicable, so that's not a fixed time frame, but it, it is a time frame specified in the Act. The manager doesn't have a duty to investigate the disclosure only to make sure that it's communicated to the right place, which is the disclosure officer. Importantly, that this means that managers will need to have a working knowledge of what a PID is so that they can spot it when they receive it. And this may not always be immediately obvious. PIDs can be oral or in writing and the person who's making the PID doesn't have to say that they're making a public interest disclosure or use any special form of words. The most important thing is that managers need to be able to identify reports of serious wrongdoing and then know how to get them to the right person in the organisation. Legislation alone is not sufficient um, to build a speak-up culture and it really, that concept really underpins the PID Act. And in fact, it's an object of the PID Act to promote a culture in which uh, public officials are encouraged to come forward and make PIDs. Um, and agencies will be required to actually report to the Ombudsman's Office about the measures that they've taken to uh, build that speak up culture. So some of the practical ways um, that leaders can do that are really about making um, PID part of the conversation. So especially with the lead up um, to the PIDAC commencing in October, it's really an opportunity for leaders to start talking about it in their all-staff emails, in their executive meetings, in team meetings, and really start giving time and space to public officials to take advantage of some of the resources that the Ombudsman has made available. So that might be about um, uploading those awareness videos um, onto their intranet and kind of publicising them um, through all staff emails. Providing that kind of clear and multiple channels for people to make PIDs and really emphasising um, the exchange of information across the agency about how a PID can be made and what kind of wrongdoing might be, um, a, might be common in that kind of context. So, that would mean that, it, that an agency could provide information to their public officials about the kind of things they need to look out for. So whether it's um, people who are engaged in procurement to kind of um, be more aware of the kind of um, wrongdoing that can occur in that context, or it might be more relevant to the local council. So it's really an opportunity for our heads of agencies to contextualise that for their public officials. Supporting staff um, by providing them with time and space to undertake the relevant training. So the Ombudsman's Office is going to be releasing the e-learning packages for managers and for um, public interest disclosure officers. So those packages are 45 minutes for the disclosure officers and 15 minutes for managers. And just giving them the time to undertake that training in, um, before 1 April, which is really the deadline for the training to be undertaken after um, the 1 October start date, and just giving them, um, I guess, the support to do that as part of their normal work duties. 
and I think the other thing is really being aware of the language that's used when you talk about PIDs. So um, in some contexts, PIDs or reporting serious wrongdoing can be seen as a negative thing and really just being aware of um, the discourse around um, that reporting culture and PIDs. It's a, a concept that I think um, man managers across the sector are thinking about a lot as they take steps to make sure that there are dis identified disclosure officers um, in all of the permanently maintained work sites that they manage. I think the best way to approach this, it's not a strictly defined term. There's not going to be a list in the act of you know, work sites that are necessarily caught by this. It really requires people to take a common sense and practical approach uh, to their operations and their environment and to consider where are the work sites that are permanently set up by the agency that have people employed in them conducting work. There are some grey areas, so temporary project sites, for example, um, might be one of those, um, noting that the Act only employs the concept of a permanently maintained work site. So those temporary sites where people might be transient are not intended to be caught um, by that definition. That said, I think if you're in any doubt as to whether or not a particular work site of the agency is a permanently maintained work site, the, the best approach is to um, assign a disclosure officer to that work site, particularly if there's otherwise a concern that the people on that work site won't know who to go to if they need to report serious wrongdoing. So I think my advice would be to not get too hung up on the technical definition, but to really think about the spirit of the Act and to ensure that you've taken a common sense and practical approach to making sure that um, there are identified disclosure officers wherever you have you know, staff routinely working a lot of the time. I think we keep coming back to the same concept of just ensuring that um, public officials have access to a number of channels through which they can make their PIDs and that they're comfortable to do so. Yeah, I should also mention that obviously the Ombudsman is there to provide guidance and support and as the Act is implemented, um, you know, there may be further um, guidance or materials available to assist agencies to identify their permanently maintained work sites. Yeah, and we have an advice team that's quite happy to provide advice um, and some guidance and explain um, the guidelines that we've issued as well to agencies. There's, there's two that I would say are the key things to do. One is to um, make sure that you've provided the Ombudsman's Office with your key contacts. The New South Wales Ombudsman wrote out to heads of agencies and sought some nominations from each agency so that we have some key people that we can communicate with about upcoming changes, the release of materials um, and the guidelines and um, for the training, most importantly. So I think the first thing to do is really to identify who those change leaders are within your agency um, and who your PID experts will be and make sure that they're in touch with the Ombudsman's Office. And if you haven't already done so, you can send those through to our PID at Ombo email. I think we have, it's a good reminder, I'll go and check. So most people have, but we are um, just following up. But it's just a really um, easy way for us to communicate those changes and ensure that every agency is um, receiving all the information that they need. And I think the second most important thing is to really ensure that um, those change leads and your PID experts and the areas that will be responsible for managing um, uh, public interest disclosures that are received by the agency are aware of the changes that are happening and um, depending on the size of your agency probably setting up some kind of project team that identifies all the changes that will need to be embedded within the agency. And some of those will be um, reviewing your PID policy. We've um, released a model PID policy with guidance that agencies can use. So you need to review your PID policy, make sure it aligns with the new PID Act, um, that it will be ready for 1 October. And really identifying within your agency who the disclosure officers will be, um, so that when the training is rolled out that you're um, ensuring that those people have the relevant training. And the other thing would be also to identify who would be a manager in your context, because it will be a large group of people for most agencies. And it's just about ensuring that you've identified those and that when the training is available, um, that will be rolled out to all of them. The other key thing would be to um, start thinking about whether you're, um, you've got a learning management system that um, can take the e-learning packages that we'll be releasing. So they'll be standard SCORM files, but it's just about engaging with your learning and development areas to ensure that they're ready for that upload of the materials as well. So they would be some key practical things. I think the PID policy um, 
is really important because that will need to be ready um, for 1 October and it, it really will be an opportunity for you to review what your current policy is and your procedures and align those to the new PID Act and probably make improvements to the way um, you've been doing things in the past as well. The other thing is to really um, make sure that you engage with the Ombudsman's Office. So we're quite happy to come out and speak to your executive teams or do some presentations and information sessions. Um, so if you'd like to take advantage of that offer, then just send us an email and we're more than happy to make arrangements. Thanks so much for your time today, Kate, um, to talk about the PID Act and thank you for joining us. Um, I know that um, there's a lot of change happening with the implementation of the Act, so I'd really encourage you to reach out to our office. We're more than happy to help. Thank you. Thank you.